Thank you, Bill Wendell. Welcome, friends, to another edition of To Tell the Truth. And unless you've been hiding in a cave somewhere for the last five years or so, you'll recognize that splendid-looking vehicle as a snowmobile. Never had the joy of riding one. I hope to someday. I understand they're fun. We've got a gal with us who knows more about them than almost anybody. We're going to meet her as soon as we meet our panel here on To Tell the Truth. Jean Rayburn! Any of you guys ever read, a, ever read, ever ride a snowmobile? I, 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 I never did. I read I one. Have. Peggy's done everything. No, I did. Been I, everywhere. Oh, keep quiet. Up Madonna Mountain, I rode them around. Is it great fun? Oh, they're it, marvelous. I mean, they make too much noise and they're bad for the ecology. So I'm told. That's at the spot. Well, all the not if they are regulated, which is what they're doing nowadays. Oh, but are they fun? Oh. They could also kill yourself. I well, know. that's why they had no lights up there when they took me up there, but I fooled them. I got out whole. <laughs> you did what? Never mind. <laughs> well, friends, if you want to know what happened, send in a self-addressed, unstamped envelope. In a, in a plain brown wrapper. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Let us now meet our snowmobile champ. Here we go. <laughs> well. Number one. What is your name, please? My name is Dorothy Mercer. Number two. My name is Dorothy Mercer. Number three. My name is Dorothy Mercer. And let's listen carefully while I read the wintry words of Dorothy Mercer. <laughs> Says here, I, Dorothy Mercer, am a snowmobile racer. I have won more races in the last three years than any other woman snowmobile racer and more than most men. In addition, I hold four women's speed records. Take a look at a snowmobile in action. <laughs> Now this shows that snowmobiling is not only a competitive sport but a lot of fun as well. The most grueling of the snowmobile competitions is the four-day, 587-mile race from Winnipeg in Canada to St. Paul, Minnesota. I finished third in this despite the fact that the temperature was from 40 degrees to 27 degrees below zero. My competition in this race was 298 men and one other woman. And the going was so rough that only 46 of us finished the race at all. Signed, Dorothy Mercer. I want to hear more about this myself, so I'm not going anywhere, and you try not to. And the ladies across the way, they all say that they are Dorothy Mercer, champion snowmobile racer. And we'll start the questioning with Kitty Carlisle, please. Thank you. I've never been in a snowmobile, and I don't think it really looks like fun. At least not what you were doing, number three. Uh, where was that we saw? It looked quite flat until you got to the end, which must have been awfully hard in your kidneys. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was coming across a lake. Yes, it was. Oh, and that wasn't part of this four-day thing? Oh, yes. It was? Yeah. Uh, number two, where did you sleep? Did you eat and so forth during the four-day ride or just ride constantly? Oh, no, we couldn't do that. Uh, we only ride for about three or four hours a day, maximum six. And then you stop? Oh, yes. Thank you. Number one, is it not true that the snowmobile motor could be adapted for automobiles because there is less exhaust emission from it? Adaptable to an automobile? Yeah. I mean, and convert it into an automobile? Use could be used as a basis for an, uh, for an automobile engine using the same principle. Mm. Yes, yes, you can. Is it true? Number what, two, who makes... Well, number three, who makes that uh, motor that is... Uh, is that a German-made motor? Fuji, it's in, uh, from Japan. And is that less... Ex uh, ha does that have less exhaust? Yes. And uh, number two, um, w why is it bad for ecology, then, if it has less exhaust? Well, it's not really bad for ecology. It depends on who you're talking to whether it's bad for ecology or not. All right, let's go down to Jean. You know, the, the ecologists uh, do object, and uh, number three, what is the, really the main objection that the uh, ecology people uh, voice, you know? Their main objection? Yeah. I think damage to the forest, probably. Mm -hmm. Number two, what kind of fuel do you burn? 
Just regular automobile type fuel or aviation fuel. Number one, uh, why did so many people drop out? Uh, did it get too cold? Or? Drop out of the race? Yeah. Well, a variety of reasons, but mostly because it was too cold. Yeah. And, and Number three, what special clothing do you wear when you're racing? Insulated uh, snowmobile suits. You wear special underwear, number three? Long underwear. Regular old-fashioned long underwear. Right. Must be a sight. <laughs> <laughs> number uh, uh, two, what's the coldest temperature you've ever experienced? Probably, I think it was about 60 below. And if you're going how fast, 60 miles an hour? Is that how fast you go, number two? Oh, that's about the average during a race, yeah. yeah. And then if it's a uh, one degree drop uh, in temperature for every mile per hour, that means the effective temperature on your body was like 100 below. How'd you keep from your cheeks from freezing? Oh, we wear face masks for one. And that takes us please to Peggy. Number one, uh, don't the ecologists subject to the noise pollution? Yes, they do. And why is that? Well, because it, first of all, it does make noise, and it's above the a decibel level. That it's but what's the effect of that on, like, forest animals? I mean, I mean it doesn't, isn't it supposed to make them go, uh, go away? I mean, well, they're frightened away. You, well, you know, hi, it's a hibernation period, actually, for the well, animals. Well, it wakes anyway. them up, then. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, they're further up the forest, up the tree line, you know. Uh, number, number three, how, much, uh, uh, how many miles do you get to a gallon? About 18. Okay, number one, number two, how many gallons of gasoline can you put in a snowmobile? Seven or eight, depends on the tank size. And do you agree that it's 18 miles to a gallon? No, it's more like 30. Thank you. Uh, number one, how many shifts do you have? Shifts on the, uh, yeah. well, depending on the, uh, on the machine itself, you can have three, four, Thank depending you. if it's modified. Thank you. Uh, number two, um, how many Amer uh, major American companies are there, do you know? Manufacturers? Yes. Oh, there were probably about 25, 30. Really? Now. Oh, my, it is burgeoned, hasn't it? <clears throat> Number three, where are you from? Nevada. My golly. Hey, how about that? We go to Alan Alda. Number three, who did you race for? Did you race for under some ages? I raced for uh, Polaris. The, uh, the missile? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, uh, number, <laughs> number one. Um, uh, Gary said that uh, 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 snowmobiles have been regulated and therefore are less dangerous to the ecology. Can you tell me in what way they've been regulated? Toward ecology? Yeah. <clears throat> well, of course, every year they make improvements, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, I don't really quite understand what the question well, is. Uh, well, uh, number, let me ask number two. Why, why are snowmobiles, because of regulation now, perhaps safer for ecology or considered to be safer? Well, every year, for instance, the, um, the decibel level goes down, the amount uh -huh. of snow, there are, I mean, the amount of sound it makes, and yeah. um, they're making... Okay, thank you. Uh, number, number three, you uh, won out over a lot of men. Uh, in fact, there was only one other woman in the race. Uh, uh, how do you account for that? Just got lucky, I guess. <laughs> yes, number one, you... Went faster, that's how. There goes the ding-dong. That means, ladies and gentlemen, we must mark our ballots, and the people at home and I will take a look over here and decide between number one, number two, and number three. And we pay $50 for each bum guess. We pay $500 if all the guesses are rotten. And Kitty starts. She is pausing. Uh, you just can't make up your mind, Miss Catherine. Huh? I know I'm wrong. Uh, it seemed incredible to me that uh, the snowmobile would use 18 gallons of gas per... She said 18 miles to the 18 gallon. 18 miles to the gallon, because a small automobile would do better than that. Uh, but number two said that the, the, the temperature can go to 60 below to 120 below. I'd be a block of ice by then. <laughs> so, you got a two showing, and we're going down to Gene, who looks like he knows positively. Well, uh, uh, Kitty's right. Uh, it, number two did sound more convincing on the miles per gallon thing. 30 sounds more reasonable than 18, which uh, number three said. Mm -hmm. But uh, number two sounded as if she had been repeating the homework that she had done very well. And she had her facts and figures well in hand. So I voted for number three. 
We've got a two and a three in Peggy Cash. Well, number one said the animals were hibernating. Well, not all animals hibernate. The deers don't. The deer don't hibernate. Lots of animals are flying around and they get scared. And I think you get more than 18 miles to a gallon, so I voted for two. A pair of twos and three, and Alan, how are you going to go? This sounds stupid, and I'll probably turn out to be wrong, but number two's helmet didn't seem to fit when she came in. <laughs> She didn't bring a real helmet. Well, maybe not. It, Came on the it, subway. It, it doesn't exactly. necessarily... I mean, they could have given the real girl a, 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 the wrong, wrong helmet. helmet. True. Uh, and, but number three somehow seemed to have the weight of authority when she spoke to me, and I voted for number three. Well, that's the way it goes here. Let's see how it matches up. The votes are all in. Well, the real Dorothy Mercer, please stand up. Well, I said, well, how do you know? There we go. We'll check that out with us. Number one, tell us about yourself. What, what's your name? What do you do? My name is Helen Conn. I'm the account executive for the Metal Tube Packaging Council of North America. Oh, great. <laughs> and number two, with those two big votes, what is your real name? What do you do? My name is Rosemary Demko, and I drive a taxi in New York City. Well, Dorothy, the big question seems to that did them some of them in was the amount of miles per per gallon. You say closer to thirty. No, on our on our racing sleds, that's entirely possible. Mm. Uh, but you were the one who said thirty, right? No, no eight. Yeah. I so they, said eighteen. Well, I'm the only one who's confused. And isn't it nice that I'm not on the panel? <laughs> uh, who makes this particular machine? To whom are we indebted? Uh, Polaris Industries. I see. Okay, well, thank you very much, Dorothy, and thank you, gals, for being with us here on the Tell the Truth. Take care now. <laughs> now, I hope you will take close note of how calmly I pronounce this next sentence when I say that our next guest is a lady who runs Murder Incorporated. Well, Why am I so calm? <laughs> Well, you'll have to stay tuned to find out. Lady who houses murderous subjects. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Dillis Wynn. Number two. My name is Dillis Wynn. Number three. My name is Dillis Wynn. And here is the spooky scenario of Dillis Wynn. Listen, if you will, it says, I, Dillis Wynn, run Murder, Inc. Let me say quickly and emphatically that this is not a gangster operation. Far from it. Murder, Inc. is the name of my bookstore. The first bookstore in New York City devoted exclusively to mystery books. Interestingly, while mystery stories sell very well, books about real crime usually don't sell well at all. My 3,000 titles of imagined villainry comprise one of the world's largest collections. I think that you'll be interested to know that I have one outrageous qualification for operating my bookstore. I was the roommate of a girl who later married none other than the sexy and swashbuckling, uh, swashbuckling mystery writer, Mr. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mickey Spillane. <laughs> oh, dear, it's Friday. Signed, Dillis Wynn. There you go, Dillis. Sexy and swashbuckling. It's right, right there. All right, now, well, let's uh, start the questioning, please, with Gene Rayburn. That's right, sexy Gene Rayburn. Number three, I assume that you got to know Mr. Spillane if she, he married your best friend, right? I did meet him, yes. Yes. Uh, was he sexy and always buckling his swash and all that? <laughs> He's huh? a very charming man. A charming man. Yes. Uh, number two, uh, where is your bookstore in New York City? It's on 87th Street between West End and Broadway on the north side of the street. <laughs> number one, what uh, what sells real well? What's your best-selling book? Probably Nicholas Freeling, and I would say the one that's out of print in this country, Valparaiso. Hmm. Number two, uh, uh, it says that you have books also on real crime, and have you read a great many of the books in your shop? Are you kind of an authority on mystery books? And Well, not a hundred percent. I like mystery stories. Uh, frankly, because I sell them and I have to keep up to date with them, I get a little tired of them. Yeah. And I don't particularly like books about real crime because I don't particularly like real crime. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, let's go to Peggy. Number two, do you know the real name of John Le Carre? Yes. What um, is it? Oh, I know it, of course, and it immediately goes out of my head. It's an English name. Uh, number one, uh, uh, do you, uh, who wrote the murder about Roger Ackroyd? Agatha Christie. Thank you. Number three, what do these people have in common? Roger West, the Toff, and the Baron. They're all written by John Creasy. Thank you. Uh, um, uh, who, number two, who's, who's, uh, uh, detective is, in, is Inspector Marriott? Inspector Marriott. Okay, Inspector. number one, Dick Francis, uh, writes of a certain background in his books. What is it? Do you know? Horseback racing. Thank you. Number three, whose detective is Miss Marple? Agatha Christie. N number two, what had just happened to Inspector Vandervalk in the last book? Well, he met with another inspector from another book. And what happened? <laughs> huh? None of your books. Okay. <laughs> number one, number one, uh, uh, whose detective is Sam Spade? Uh, Dashiell Hammett. Thank you. Number three, what's the answer? That's where we Piggy's over there like a district attorney. I don't know how Sam Spade, eh? All right, we're going to go to Alan Alde. How do you like that there? Alan? Thank you. Uh, number one, uh, Mickey Spillane's wife was uh, recently uh, in the newspapers uh, in connection with one of uh, Mr. Spillane's books. And what was the connection? She was on the cover. I see. Uh, number, uh, number three... Oh, who, who, uh, who's the uh, author of the uh, May Gray stories? Who? Have I got the... Have I Inspector May Gray. Inspector May Gray. Oh, uh, Inspector May Gray is your Simenon. Thank you. Uh, uh, number one, um, do you get... Uh, often I read that uh, people in the high government circles uh, read uh, and enjoy mystery stories. Do, have you had any interesting people uh, come into your shop? Mostly authors looking for their own works. <laughs> <laughs> That's typical. All right, Kitty. Number three, did you get a nice husband, too? No. Oh, don't worry, oh. you're terrible. Come. That's terrible. No, she has a husband. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number one, did you meet this uh, lady who found Mr. Spillane in college? Yes. Where was that? Pembroke College. I see. Number two, uh, do you make money in your bookshop? It's not a notoriously lucrative enterprise, is it? Well, I've only been in business a few months, so it's a little hard to tell, but I think I will. Oh. Number three, uh, have you only been in business a few months? Yes, since June. What made you do this? Well, I used to work in the public library in England, and there's such a following for mystery stories, I decided that if ever I opened my own bookstore, that would be it. I see. Number one, do these authors who come in, if they don't find their own books, are they enraged and do they berate you? No, usually they ask me to go on a search for them. Ah. <laughs> and there we go. It is now ballot marking time. Everybody's going to mark their ballot according to what they think, whether it's number one or number two or number three. Has everybody got a ballot <clears throat> set then? All right, Gene, if you'll start, please. Well... It was a choice between one and three. They were terrific. Number two gave me the impression that she had memorized all the material a little bit. Uh, she did her homework well, but, uh, and just, I went with number one. She had that quiet authority about her. All righty, we got a one, Sean. Peg, how are you going to go? Well, number three was really very good, but number two didn't know Van der Vaart got killed in the last book. I was never so astonished. I mean, the good guy. I think it's number one because I know a fellow mystery story person when I see her. I want to tell you, you asked some tough questions, Alan. Oh, easy. Uh, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm torn between uh, uh, one and three, but I think a three, something about the way number three said I worked in a library and wanted to, what reminds me of a girl I know who wanted to work in a library because she liked books. She just seemed to like books. Oh, right. You got uh, a three. And I, I voted for three. Three and a pair of ones. And Kitty, how are well, you? Well, I voted for number one for a very simple reason. From what I know about authors, they're always going into the bookshop to look for their own books. And that's the real one. Well, it's almost a total thing. Alan's the holdout. We'll find out. The votes are in. Will the real Dillis win? Please stand up. Ah. Uh -huh. Well, girls, that's, you have such a specialized feel. Very tough to fake on. Number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Kathleen Moore. I work for Rankin Bass, and we make children's animated television programs. Oh, sure. Good to have you here. 
And number three, tell us about yourself. My name is June Keir, and I work for the British Consulate. Ah. Phyllis, uh, are you like uh, a chef in a restaurant who doesn't really like to eat? Do you, do you uh, like mystery stories? I love them. I really love them. And this is how you got into it, huh? yeah. sort of an offspring of a hobby. Well, it was either sell them or commit one. I, you know, I had that option. <laughs> and I chose to sell them. Oh, well, we're glad we have such a shop in New York. And thank you very much, Dillis. And thank you, ladies, for being with us here on The Tell the Truth. up clever clues on the $25,000 pyramid, then spouses engage in spirited spats on the newlywed game and the new newlywed game. Well, and we're going to see you again. And Alan Alda, yeah. thank you very thank much. You. Gene, really Peggy, and Kitty, we'll see you all. Take care. My simple characters today will receive an lovely dress from Sue Bread, the house of many moves. Sue Bread, dresses and ensembles that create excitement to fit to perfection. Promotional considerations are mine and mine at Western Motels. Nation's largest chain of 1,200 fine owner operated hotels in 900 cities from coast to coast. Snowmobile, courtesy of Polaris Snowmobile Company. This is Bill Wendell speaking for To Tell the Truth, a Mark Goodson, Bill Cotton production. your cheeks from freezing. Oh, we wear face masks for one. And that takes us please to Peggy. Number one, uh, don't the ecologists object to the noise pollution? Yes, they do. And why is that? Well, because it, first of all, it does make noise. And it's well, above the a effect? decibel level. That it's but what's the effect of that on, like, forest animals? I mean, it doesn't, isn't it supposed to make them go, uh, go away? I mean, well, they're frightened away. You will... You know, it's a hibernation period, actually, for the animals Well, it wakes anyway. them up, then. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, they're further up the forest, up the tree line, you know. Uh, number, number three, how, much, uh, uh, how many miles do you get to a gallon? About 18. Okay, number, w number two, how many gallons of gasoline can you put in a snowmobile? Seven or eight. Depends on the tank size. And do you agree that it's 18 miles to a gallon? No, it's more like 30. Thank you. Uh, number one, how many shifts do you have? Shifts on the, uh, yeah. well, depending on the, uh, on the machine itself, you can have three, four, Thank depending you. if it's modified. Thank you. Uh, number two, um, how many Amer uh, major American companies are there? Do you know? Manufacturers? Yes. Oh, there were probably about 25, 30. Really? Now. Oh, my, it is burgeoned, hasn't it? <clears throat> number three, where are you from? Nevada. My golly. <coughs> Hey, how about that? We go to Alan Alda. Number three, who did you race for? Did you race for under some ages? I raced for uh, Polaris. The uh, the missile? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, uh, number, <laughs> number one. Um, uh, Gary said that uh, uh, snowmobiles have been regulated and therefore are less dangerous to the ecology. Can you tell me in what way they've been regulated? Toward ecology? Yeah. <clears throat> well, of course, every year they make improvements. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I don't. I don't really quite understand what the question. Well, is. Uh, well, uh, number, let me ask number two. Why? Why are snowmobiles, because of regulation, now perhaps safer for ecology, or considered to be safer? Well, every year, for instance, the um, the decibel level goes down. The amount uh -huh. of snow, there. I mean, the amount of sound it makes, and yeah. um, they're making. Okay, thank you. Uh, number number three. You uh, won out over a lot of men. Uh, in fact, there was only one other woman in the race. Uh, uh, how do you account for that? Just got lucky, I guess. <laughs> yes, number one, you went faster. That's how. There goes the ding dong. That means, ladies and gentlemen, we must mark our ballots, and the people at home and I will take a look over here and decide between number one, and number two, 
and number three. And we pay $50 for each bum guest. We pay $500 if all the guests are rotten. And Kitty starts. She is pausing. Uh, you just can't make up your mind, Miss Catherine. Huh? I know I'm wrong. Uh, it seemed incredible to me that uh, the snowmobile would use 18 gallons of gas per... She said 18 miles to the 18 gallon. 18 miles to the gallon, because a small automobile would do better than that. Uh, but number two said that the, th the, the temperature can go to 60 below to 120 below. I'd be a block of ice by then. <laughs> so, you got a two showing, and we're going down to Gene, who looks like he knows positively. Well, uh, uh, Kitty's right. Uh, it, number two did sound more convincing on the miles per gallon thing. 30 sounds more reasonable than 18, which uh, number three said. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, Number two sounded as if she had been repeating the homework that she had done very well, and she had her facts and figures well in hand. So I voted for number three. We've got a two and a three in Peggy Castor. Well, number one said the animals were hibernating. Well, not all animals hibernate. The deers don't. The deer don't hibernate. Lots of animals are flying around, and they get scared. And I think you get more than 18 miles to a... And more than most men. In addition, I hold four women's speed records. Take a look at a snowmobile in action. <laughs> Now, this shows that snowmobiling is not only a competitive sport, but a lot of fun as well. The most grueling of the snowmobile competitions is the four-day, 587-mile race from Winnipeg in Canada to St. Paul, Minnesota. I finished third in this, despite the fact that the temperature was from 40 degrees to 27 degrees below zero. My competition in this race was 298 men and one other woman. And the going was so rough that only 46 of us finished the race at all. Signed, Dorothy Mercer. <laughs> hey, I want to hear more about this myself, so I'm not going anywhere, and you try not to. And the ladies across the way, they all say that they are Dorothy Mercer, champion snowmobile racer. And we'll start the questioning with Kitty Carlisle, please. Thank you. I've never been in a snowmobile, and I don't think it really looks like fun. At least not what you were doing, number three. Uh, where was that we saw? It looked quite flat until you got to the end, which must have been awfully hard in your kidneys. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was coming across a lake. Yes, it was. Oh, and that wasn't part of this four-day thing? Oh, yes. It was? Yeah. Uh, number two, where did you sleep? Did you eat and so forth during the four-day ride or just ride constantly? Oh, no, we couldn't do that. Uh, we only ride for about three or four hours a day, maximum six. And then you stop? Oh, yes. Thank you. Number one, is it not true that the snowmobile motor could be adapted for automobiles because there is less exhaust emission from it? Adaptable to an automobile? Yeah. You mean converted into an automobile? Use could be used as a basis for an, uh, for an automobile engine, using the same principle. Mm. Yes, yes, you can. Is it true? Number what, two, who makes... Well, number three, who makes that uh, motor that is... Uh, is that a German-made motor? Fuji, it's uh, from Japan. And is that less... Ex uh, have, does that have less exhaust? Yes. And uh, number two, um, w why is it bad for ecology, then, if it has less exhaust? Well, it's not really bad for ecology. It depends on who you're talking to whether it's bad for ecology or not. All right, let's go down to Gene. You know, the, the ecologists uh, do object, and uh, number three, what is the, really the main objection that the uh, ecology people uh, voice, do you know? Their main objection? Yeah. I think damage to the forest, probably. Mm -hmm. Number two, what kind of fuel do you burn? Just regular automobile-type fuel or aviation fuel. Number one, uh, why did so many people drop out? Did, we, did it get too cold? Or? Drop out of the race? Yeah. Well, a variety of reasons, but mostly because it was too cold. Yeah. And Number three, what special clothing do you wear when you're racing? Insulated uh, snowmobile suits. You wear special underwear, number three? Long underwear. Regular old-fashioned long underwear. Right. Must be a sight. <laughs> <laughs> Number uh, uh, two, what's the coldest temperature you've ever experienced? Probably, I think it was about 60 below. And if you're going how fast, 60 miles an hour? Is that how fast you go, number two? 
Uh, that's about the average during a race. Yeah. yeah. And then if it's uh, one degree drop uh, in temperature for every mile per hour, that means the effective temperature on your body was like 100 below. How'd you keep... friends to another edition of to tell the truth and unless you've been hiding in a cave somewhere for the last five years or so you'll recognize that splendid looking vehicle as a snowmobile never had the joy of riding one i hope to someday i understand they're fun we've got a gal with us who knows more about them than almost anybody we're going to meet her as soon as we meet our panel here on to tell the truth gene Razor. Of you guys ever read, a, uh, ever read, ever ride a snowmobile? I, 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 I never I read I one. Have. Peggy's done everything. No, I did. Been everywhere. Oh, keep quiet. Up Madonna Mountain, I rode them around. Is it great fun? Oh, they're it's... marvelous. They make too much noise and they're bad for the ecology. So I'm told. That's it. The spots well, over, friends. not if they are regulated, which is what they're doing nowadays. Oh, but I mean, are they fun? Oh. They could also kill yourself. I well, know. that's why they had no lights up there when they took me up there, but I fooled them. I got out whole. <laughs> you did what? Never mind. <laughs> well, friends, if you want to know what happened, send in a self-addressed, unstamped envelope. In a, in a flame brown wrapper. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Let us now meet our snowmobile champ. Here we go. <laughs> well. Number one. What is your name, please? My name is Dorothy Mercer. Number two. My name is Dorothy Mercer. Number three. My name is Dorothy Mercer. And let's listen carefully while I read the wintry words of Dorothy Mercer. It says here, I, Dorothy Mercer, am a snowmobile racer. I have won more races in the last three years than any other woman snowmobile racer 